So fortunately, um, uh, we haven't been in the position as Dr. Malone has been where he's had to tell a family as a treating uh, hospitalist that their loved one has died in the hospital. And um, that, sent, that is probably a very daunting task for any physician, I'm sure. They're trying to save people, to help people, and here they are having to tell them that there's nothing they can do and their family member has died. Now. The purpose of this video is to talk about if that happens to you, to you and you feel like that, that your loved one has died under suspicious circumstances that may indicate some kind of medical malpractice and you want that looked at. Some families immediately go to this thing about why aren't y'all doing an autopsy? Why is there not more facts here available to the family uh, about why my loved one has passed away? And everybody's immediate reaction is, why don't you do an autopsy? Because everybody thinks automatically that every autopsy is the same kind of autopsy, and that's not the case, right? So we've talked about in other videos is difference between a hospital autopsy and a medical examiner autopsy, and then a private autopsy where you as the family or the law firm hire a, a, a forensic pathologist to handle the to post-mortem exam. The family naturally, I think, and I'll ask Dr. Malone to speak to this, wants answers like right there on the spot they want answers and there's different family members that are chiming into the conversation it's chaotic and i'm sure somebody is thinking or saying why don't they do something to figure out what happened well the hospital i'll let dr malone speak to this but the person has died so the hospital's job in regards to providing care to that person has ended right and they don't really have protocols that are set in stone for hospital-type autopsies. A doctor can order that, I believe, but many times their care is over with because, uh, in large part, I don't want to be cynical here, but insurance companies are not into paying for medical services for people that are not alive, right? So um, I'll let Dr. Malone speak to how this conversation comes up, and then at the end, I'll chime in again about why the hospital autopsy is not really a good thing anyway. Um, Dr. Malone, tell us how this conversation goes about. Uh, families always want answers, unexpected death in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You've been in that situation. Tell us what that's like. Um, well, it's tough, as you might imagine, and I guess uh, every situation is different. So there's been instances where the, the person dies and there's no one around and we're trying to track down, I guess, next of kin or whom to notify. And so that can sometimes take hours or even a day or two. Um, and you're kind of in a holding pattern to that point between you and just like the medical examiner's office. Um, and then there are other times where there's so many family members around that you have to clear out an entire waiting room to allow them just to have the room they need. So when that happens, you, yeah. you're the one that has to go out to the waiting room and, and, and talk to this entire waiting room full of relatives, right? Yeah. How did, what is that conversation like and how does it go? Um, well, and again, everything's a little bit different. Sometimes if it's an anticipated death um, where, you know, everybody is, they know what I'm going to say before you walk in. Right. Um, those are easier uh, when it's not anticipated, when it's uh, sudden, uh, some sort of trauma. Um, they're, they're not fully aware of the circumstances. You know, we just got a call told us to come to the hospital. Those are the tough ones. Somebody goes in for surgery exactly. and they come out uh, brain dead or mm -hmm. they come out uh, worse than they started, right? Yeah. And you're in there explaining to them, doctor, what happened? Like, I'm, I'm sure those questions come from the family. Doctor, tell us what, why, did, why, why did this happen? Yeah. Yeah, and, and many times you don't know. And so it's it's not a scapegoat. It's a it's an honest answer of, I don't know. And it's not a, I don't want to uh, accept blame or accept liability or anything like that. It's, it's, you really don't know. Well, and a lot of that's because you do have access to the EMR, right? Yeah. So you can see what has happened, but it's not like you've had, you have, like you do here, you have hours and hours and days to study all the medical records, right? Yeah. And then you can sort of come up with a, okay, well, this is what sounds like happened. As a practicing hospitalist or somebody that's like rounding on patients in real time, 
you don't have time to review the chart in the in the detail necessary to come up with a cause of death, right? Exactly, and and so put yourself in a position that I would be in, for instance, where if, if the answer to the family was he's going to review the chart and talk to you tomorrow, you would be pretty unhappy. No doubt, right? No doubt. You would immediately you would immediately say something's up. I need to talk to a manager. Or yeah, or somebody. So else. so it, you know, many times it's it, I don't know what it is. We're we're gonna I don't know what the cause. Or the circumstances were fully, I want to do some research, I want to investigate this. And that's many times where one of two things, this is a medical examiner's case, they've accepted it and they're going to get some answers for us. Or we've it's been investigated by the medical examiner, they're not going to do an autopsy, they've got the information they need to say, yep, this is the cause of the manner of death, we're done here. If that's the case, then it's it's the attending physician to say, I still don't know what. I looked at the chart. I spoke with the family. I spoke with the other doctors. Maybe at the hospital. Maybe we need to do an autopsy to get some answers for the family and the doctors, everybody involved in the care. So that's the one that you had mentioned where a physician can, I guess, order the right. autopsy. And I'm just not, here's my thinking on that. I think they're done many times as a way to get out of this conversation and a way to shut down any suspicion, right? Because the doctors know that this autopsy that the hospital does is going to be inconclusive about cause of death. It's just going to be basically a uh, recitation of the anatomy uh, that appeared in your loved one at the time they passed away without connecting any dots, right? But it's a way for them to get out of the conversation in the waiting room that they're uncomfortable in. I don't think it's in your best interest to have an autopsy done by the hospital that potentially you're saying has killed your relative. Right, that makes really little sense. The medical examiner autopsy is a whole different ball game, right? Um, and the private autopsy that we spoke about is is a whole nother level than I think medical examiner because they're not they're focused on that one case at yeah. that time they do it. So um, this is my long way of suggesting as a lawyer that handles these kind of cases is that if one of your family members is pressing for this hospital autopsy, that you understand that maybe they should all come talk to me first before that happens because it's one of those situations where I don't know that it's going to help and it could hurt because now you're saying to the hospital that allegedly had something to do with your relative's death, we're going to trust you in a dark basement room at the hospital to go through our relative's organs, right? And to basically rummage through their bodies and try to find what caused their death in the meantime, that is the evidence that we're going to need looked at during a private autopsy. And, and let me say this. If there's a case there, the private autopsy is almost a necessity. So then you're putting your loved one through two autopsies. So you and your family have to then think to yourselves, okay, we're going to put them through one autopsy here, basically on enemy territory, okay, because that's what it is. And then we're going to take him out of the setting, get him to a forensic pathologist, and we're going to put him through another, or him or her through another autopsy with a forensic pathologist. And there's no telling what the first pathologist has taken out of your loved one and kept, right? Put in a refrigerator, discarded, whatever, right? That stuff could be important to us. So long way of saying, you need to tamp down the people in your group that are hammering for a hospital-based autopsy. If there's a medical examiner autopsy that's going to happen, that's a whole different story, and that is something your family should be open to. But if it's a hospital-based autopsy, it's almost better they didn't if we're going to end up with a private autopsy anyway. And and you don't provide consent for the hospital to perform that autopsy if, if there's a push for it from the physician side. If, if you don't agree, say, I don't provide consent, and then you independently seek a private autopsy. And don't expect... Many physicians to give you a lot of detail in that conversation where they tell you your loved one's passed away because really they don't know for sure, right? And if it's something care related, they're never going to come out and tell you that, okay? I, I mean, it would be rare, <laughs> but even if they wanted to tell you, they probably wouldn't do it directly, okay? So don't expect complete candor in that conversation, not saying they would be dishonest, but I'm just saying they would m maybe not highlight those items that are a little more controversial because they haven't done a pure 
review of the case like a lawyer would do or a physician working at a law firm would do. They haven't done that forensic examination of all the records. So long and short of it is, if you have a wrongful death case from a medical malpractice situation, you need to seek out an expert lawyer for that matter to review it, especially one that has a physician at the office. Um, if you have questions about that situation or medical malpractice, wrongful death cases, you can find us on the web at zarsialaw.com or you can call us at 855-HIRE-JOE. Thank you. Thank you.